Hello friends, this side Rahul Magan here from Treasury Consulting LLP as a Chief Executive Officer and today we are going to speak about a very very interesting topic that is reached, that is happening in the world of accounting and also would impact bank. In India this would impact in 2019 and uh, in other parts of the world that has already started impacting the bank which is, I, which is risk management under IFRS 9. So in this video we are going to cover about very very important topics that how what are the various new changes that is happening in IFRS 9 and how the Basel 3 is also slowly slowly aligning with the IFRS 9 and over the period of the time how things would move how things would move ahead for the banks what changes they need to take care of about their balance sheets yes we strongly understand that by 2019 you know this will get applicable for banks in India so they are not very very serious about that but nonetheless the purpose of the video is to let you know that exactly how it happens and what are the new changes which are happening in the field of finance in the field of foreign exchange in that regards besides acting as a chief executive officer i am also acting as a country director for two international firms which is international institute of certified forensics investigation professionals which is an american body secondly uh, headquartered in us uh, new york in fact and secondly is association of certified forensic uh, association of certified forensic professional acfap which is a dubai based firm well as regards the treasury consulting llp is concerned we are having multiple revenue streams like publication knowledge knowledge commerce trainings domain corporate and management consulting auditing risk and insurance accounting domain b engagement and fintech in this we are going to uh, launch uh, in this video in this we are going to launch uh, 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 basically our K commerce is coming very soon whereby we are launching a lot of videos a lot of CDs uh, on the DVDs uh, pertaining to the lot of CDs and DVDs pertaining pertaining to the variety of the topics and our first CD and DVDs is coming in the end of September so here we go uh, we are talking about IFRS 9 as we very well understand that IFRS 9 is a very very important financial standard in fact in my view in IFRS there are three important financial standards one is IFRS 9, IFRS 13 which is valuation and third is your IFRS 3 which is business combinations well there may be uh, different thought about IFRS 9 but as we very well understand that today sitting today in fact on the Bloomberg TV itself a lot of debate has been happening that uh, why you know the banks across Europe and US are failing why the liquidity is short across the globe what, what exactly it is happening and one of the logics behind giving by the Bloomberg TV also is that that the liquidity is falling short because a lot of banks having so much derivatives which are highly complicated in nature in valuation or the underlying assumptions which were taken in these uh, kind of structures were not good enough to currently substantiate hence for the valuation is extremely low so IFRS 9 is taking care of all of that in fact in my view IFRS 9 is very stringent on that to be honest and in my view once IFRS 9 would get applicable for Indian banks and corporates roughly in 2019 then it would be very difficult for banks to survive although I understand that uh, sitting today the majority uh, the only problem for basically one of the biggest problem for India is your uh, no gross non-performing assets but still Treasury Consulting LLP believe that once in 2019 IFRS would happen then it won't be very easy for the banks to perform here, here, here in India so banks are giving for IFRS 9 and uh, this time IFRS 9 is uh, not a mathematic it's not a simply a copycat kind of stuff uh, it is all about the mathematical quantification of expected credit losses which is shortly known as ECL and IFRS 9 needs to take care of that IFRS 9 is an accounting standard for recognition and measurement of the financial instrument that will replace IS 39, International Accounting Standard 39. IFRS 9, uh, Basel 3 is pushing uh, through the cycle and probabilities of default, loss given default, exposures at default using IFRS 9. These all are mathematical quantification that we, uh, we are going to show to you. But please be note that li likewise we have FS 157 and 133 which is US gap if you go via Indian gap then this is IS 31 and IS 32 and if you go by uh, the other which is uh, IAS international accounting center things are not very easy in IFRS time 
So a lot of quantification, something which is required by the banks to do in that you have to be prepared accordingly. I think a lot of softwares will also come, but the majority point is how people getting the valuation and what all assumptions you are using. Because valuation is always an art, it is not a science. The way you value, I may not value. Or the way I value, you may not value. Or the underlying assumption of yours might not be as same as the, uh, as same as the underlying assumption of mine. So these are the few things that we need to take care of. I hope uh, we, we, we would have that as a least possible. And impairment modeling is again the biggest step which has been taken by IFRS 9. Impairment modeling refers to the goodwill impairment or the impairment of uh, any kind of uh, any intangible which is which is although this is amortized this is getting amortized but now they, they do not hold true in the system so impairment modeling is very very essential IFRS 9 is very essential for all the banks IFRS 9 modeling is essential for all the banks especially at the time when derivative instruments are facing almost no liquidity as valuation is very tight we all understand that what is happening across the globe there is no doubt that everybody is understand that banks are falling they are facing so many losses they are facing so many fines pertaining to the foreign exchange uh, the 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 rigging of the interest rate like today i was reading that pertaining to the anti money laundering there is a bank in taiwan who was uh, charged approximately 180 million dollars of fine by the us regulator so things are not very good cash flows of the banks are not very good and I, I, I do, I'm not very surprised that if IFRS 9 might not, uh, might not turn out to be as easy uh, for the people, right? Now moving higher, uh, as we understand that IFRS 9 is, is an accounting standard, but we should not treat this as an accounting standard, rather we should treat this as a model, because uh, that is something which is very, very essential. In my view, the following four would be the factor of a model when it comes to IFRS 9. The first would be model governance, the second would be model development, third would be model deployment, fourth would be model validation. Model governance refers to all the rules, regulations like mark to market, interest rate hedging, derivatives, all and everything needs to be taken care of. Model development means we you need to consider each and everything about that model. Model deployment means you need to understand that where you can deploy the model, which are all your branches who are having an exposure, or if I, if you talk from the regulator point of view, which all instruments you are you are, which all uh, counterparties have that exposure and so on and so forth. Next is the model validation. The next paragraph which you see, which is Basel, which is the balance between Basel three and uh, uh, impairment modeling. Uh, we all understand that impairment modeling is getting very tight in Basel in Basel 3 and especially in IFRS 9. So ECL expected credit losses or the impairment modeling of the intangible is not going to be as easy for the people, those who are thinking. So please be careful in uh, that regards. Now moving forward, uh, this is very important we need to understand. Uh, uh, this chart will help you to uh, clearly make sure that how things are moving. So in the first weeks we covered like corporates hedged using financial instruments and what are the financial instruments they are hedged which is receivable hedging, payables hedging, interest rate hedging, OIS, OIS stands for overnight index swap, option strategies, payoffs and could be respective. In interest rate hedging itself we can be hedged using principal only swap, coupon only swap, cross currency interest rate swap. And we know that principal only swap are of two type, which is, uh, you know, you have a dollarization swap, you would have a reverse dollarization swap. So there are a lot of uh, financial transactions that can happen. Now, IFRS 9, as we earlier mentioned that, IFRS 9 talking about the mathematical quantification of the stuff. We do not talk about the theoretical quantification of the stuff. In fact, there are a lot of talks uh, which are happening across the globe which, uh, which suggest that uh, IFRS 9 is turning out to be a quant based uh, accounting standard rather than a qualitative based accounting standard and I myself support that thought that yes it is a quant based accounting standard. So these are the following uh, four or five steps which uh, currently is in discussion in IFRS 9. One is expected credit losses, probability of default, loss given default, shortly known as LGD exposure as default and impairment modeling. 
So expected credit losses is the losses that would happen because of all credit you given, rest is uh, all sufficient, probability of default, what is the probability of a default, loss given default, exposure, how much exposure is at default, and impairment modeling which refers to your intangibles and sometimes in, uh, those intangibles which are subject to amortization but yes they do not exist so you will go with this. Sitting today, uh, IFRS 9 divided all financial instruments into three parts, more or same like IS 39. Loans and other, other debt instruments that the firm intend to hold till maturity and this way you will going to do the amortized cost and you should be passed the SPPA and uh, you should have to go for the amortization cost. This is more, more like uh, IS 39. Here uh, you need to pass the SPPA test which is a safety test you need to pass on. Then you use the second kind of instru instrument is uh, your uh, equity and debt instruments held as portfolio investor. So that need to be carried out at fair value. Fair value refer to you need to do the mark to market. But please note carefully that in that there are three ways of uh, mark to market. There are three ways of uh, mark to market. Example. Uh, uh, I would say uh, L1 which is mark to market, L2 which is uh, mark to model and L3 with uh, sorry L2 which is mark to matrix and L3 which is mark to which is mark to model. And third but uh, not the least you need to pass out uh, the other sets as well as the conventional debt and equity instruments which are unconventional are taken in unconventional circumstances that needs to be taken care of and that the fair value will pass in OCI. OCI stands for other comprehensive income. Other comprehensive income. But few things that we need to take care of very seriously while talking about all these tests is the first which is loans and advances. Sorry my mistake. Loans and other debt instruments that the firms intend to hold to maturity and basically that will carry that amortization cost and uh, it would pass to uh, and it would be SPPA test. Now SPPA test is very very essential. Now take a simple example I am talking about uh, uh, SPPA test. The ISP believes that amortized cost would provide relevant and useful information as long as the contractual cash flows do not introduce risk or volatility that are basic to that are basically inconsistent in arrangement. The assessment of the characteristics of the contractual cash flows aims as identifying whether the contractual cash flows are solely payment of principal and interest or could be both. Hence the assessment is, is colloquially refer, referred to an SPPA test. The SPPA test is designed to screen out the financial assets on which application of the effective interest rate method you know that effective interest rate method uh, either is not too valuable or pure mathematical standard doesn't provide the useful information which is uh, effective interest method. So these are the three ways which you need to do. Now what are the precautions that Indian bank uh, used to do right now? Now sitting today currently which is Indian gap there is not very clearly inconsistent which mentioned that L1, L2, L3. L1 refer to mark to, mark to, uh, mark to, mark to market. L2 refer to mark to matrix and L3, L3 refers to mark to model. Now L1 100% observations are from market. L2 approximately 90%, sometimes 80, sometimes 85 are from market and rest is taken from the model. The person who is creating the model. L3 refers to when the obligation from the market is zero or we are not taking any input from the market. We are simply devising the theory as per the current people who are on the board and so on and so forth. Second problem is that which is uh, you are uh, hedging instruments. The hedging instruments in India are extremely shallow and there is a big problem in that. So if today you are taking an option contract or range forward or derivative then you might get an easily pricing from the from foreign banks. I am not expecting from local banks but you will get an easily pricing from the foreign bank. But suppose if you are going for an exotic structure like uh, you are uh, Seagull, Straddle and all these you know then it, it would be very difficult for a trader to arrange out the price because market is going very very highly volatile. 
So these quantification you need to take expected trade losses, probability of default, loss given default, exposure as default, and impairment modeling. This is very very important. And uh, moving forward, moving forward, 90% of the valuations which are happening across the globe. This is L1. L1 refers to mark to mark, mark to mark, uh, mark, sorry, mark to market. Wherein 100% of the observation is taken from the market. There is no personal observation you are having. We should clearly understand that sitting today, not a single circular has been passed by L1, by L2, by L3. That is something we need to appreciate and we need to acknowledge. So, this was all about uh, IFRS 9. We would like to summarize that IFRS 9 is turning very, very important. I might not be surprised that for 2019, by the time IFRS would come, Indian banks were not able to hold that capital. According to a research that more than 90, uh, according to a research, Indian bank needs approximately 91 billion dollar of uh, uh, capital if they really want to comply with the uh, with the Basel III. And I considering the fact that India do not have enough money, I strongly doubt that how they will get this. Uh, this much so much amount of money 91 billion dollar especially when fcnr window on the way so this was the purpose of the video i hope you like this video this was all about ifrs 9 and just to let you know that how what are the quantification they are they are uh, looking for we created an and excel file and which we go to demonstrate you that if you are having that structure wherein you are you are playing with the big foreign exchange so you can have uh, you can how you can uh, go ahead with the ifrs 9 but before uh, move, uh, let's uh, here is the Excel file. You people can uh, very well see that these are, are the interest rate contract futures, forward rate agreement, swaps, option purchase, option returns. These all are the future uh, rate, which is future forward forward swaps, options, and so. And these are the derivatives, total equity, credit, and others. So if you see that I have added this F two, this is the number you will get, and so on so forth. And if you see that here is a total, which is F2. Sorry, my mistake. This is F3. And if you see this number, there is something which we need to see very carefully. That from where this is a dummy figure we mentioned, which is 8000. From where this is coming is credit value adjustment would happen. If today I am selling something to a bank, bank must be selling in the market because nobody will take the risk. We all understand that we are all scheduled to these two depression or could be a very very unfortunate situation. Henceforth, you need to do the credit value adjustment. So you will hedge your exposure in the interbank market. Yes, there are a variety of questions that would come that if you have taken a hedge program, if you have taken a hedge, it, why a bank should be on the other side of the game? Only because bank may feel that this won't happen, but you feel that the, the, this would happen. This is what market is all about. So if you have this kind of Excel file, then you need to mention the credit value adjustment and valuation of credit value adjustment is not very difficult. We are planning to cover a separate video on that, how to value credit, credit value adjustment and how to do debit value adjustment. This was an Excel file which we demonstrate to you in that regards. Moving towards the presentation, you can see that uh, uh, sitting today, Treasury Consulting LLP is present almost everywhere. You can see the signs. There is not a single social networking which we missed selling today and uh, this is what the clients of Treasury Consulting LLP we have banks are clients financial institution corporates and education is, uh, education institution this is our brand which is foreign exchange memory thinkers which we show in the form of in the earlier slides as the pictures but here uh, just to explain you we have a brand which is foreign exchange memory thinkers which you can join wherein we were service wherein we have millions of people to gather a lot of data and uh, to uh, update them uh, from the market's point of view. Uh, this brand is on LinkedIn, LinkedIn FX Club, YouTube channel, Daily Motion, Derivative Groups, Basel 3 Groups, Facebook, Skype, Google Group, Google Blog, Digital Library and Google, Dropbox and SlideShare and more on the way. More on the way. This is our YouTube channel. You simple open uh, YouTube, type Rahul Magan, you will get the same. I wish you all the best if you are a banker because IFRS 9 is on the way. And IFRS 9, 9 is slowly sinking with Basel 3. And if it will get with Basel 3, then majority of the stock would, would be mathematically quantified. For, for that, you need to be prepared and you need to be honest in that regards. 
with this we thank you very much and uh, have a good luck thank you